Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are excited, say glory. Turn to your neighbor and give anybody a kind smile. Tell that person it's rhapsody time. Praise God. I want to start by saying a big thank you to my man of God, Pastor Life Morafa, for this wonderful opportunity to take this segment of the service. And from wherever you're participating in the world, it's time to study her messenger angel, the rhapsody of realities. Praise God. So please kindly bring out your copy. If you have your copy, please raise it. Just wave it like this. Okay, now, the, the tradition is this. You must look into a copy. So if you're seated here and you don't have a copy, kindly look into that of your neighbor. Kindly look into that of your neighbor. Don't just stare in the hair. Make sure you're looking into a copy. If you're not looking into a copy, I'll call you out. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a lighter one anyway. Praise God. Today, Pastor is teaching us on the topic, the new and living way. The new and living way. Our opening text is taken from the book of Hebrews 10, from verse 19 to 20. It says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Hallelujah. How awesome this is. Jesus opened for us a new and living way to the Father. He took out the veil to the Father's presence and ushered us in. Blessed be God. Remember his words in John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Recall that in Genesis, Adam had sinned against God and was driven away from the presence of God together with his wife, Eve. They had been in fellowship with God in the Garden of Eden. But the Bible says God sent an angel with a flaming sword to stay at the gate of the garden to disallow them from re-entering the garden. Suddenly, the rich fellowship man once had with God was over. So sad. Then pastor said, that was the beginning of religion. Man began to do everything he could to get that divine presence again. We can see the genesis of religion here. So all the religion you see in the world, this is the genesis. Men seeking ways for a presence. They know there's a being. They are seeking access to this being. Man began to do everything he could to get that divine presence again. All the religions of the world today are seeking the same thing, the divine presence. Man had no way to get back into that presence until Jesus came. Hallelujah. Praise God. Until Jesus came. He made a startling statement, which we read earlier. He said, I am the way. No one comes to the Father but by me. This was what Adam needed. That was what the patriarchs of the Old Testament all needed. The way to the Father's presence. Jesus is that way. When he died on the cross, the Bible says, the thick veil that separated the temple from the most holy place was torn in two from top to bottom. That account is in Matthew 27, verse 51. Making the presence of God accessible. Today, there is no veil. No separation anymore between you and the Father. Hallelujah. You live in his presence. And the Bible says, in, the presence, in his presence is the fullness of joy and pleasures evermore. Hallelujah. That is in Psalm 16, verse 11. Now, Pastor is telling us, Speaking to that man, that woman, you that is watching online, or maybe you that is seated here in church, pastor is telling you, if you haven't found your way into his presence, if you are not yet born again, there's no need to wallow in sin, defeat, and ignorance anymore. There's no need searching for the way. Jesus is the way. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. And the big one. 
you are the way. <laughs> because as he is, so are you in this world. Hallelujah. <laughs> so there's no need searching anymore for the way. Jesus is the way. All you need to do is confess his lordship over your life. And your spirit will be recreated to begin an exciting life in God's presence for eternity. Hallelujah. Praise God. Were you blessed by that? So powerful a topic. Thank you so much, Pastor Sir. No, Pastor keeps feeding us with the word. If you've been studying your rhapsody this month, it's been so loaded. Who, are, who is the witness here? It's been so loaded. I know if I'm to give maybe some of you the opportunity to come here and share your experiences so far, it's going to be so much, so loaded. Now, we'll take the confession. I'd like you to please lift up your right hand and say these words after me. Say, I was born into God's presence to live eternally in joy, glory, and pleasures evermore. My life is upward and forward because in his presence is the path of life. His light illuminates and all I see is blessings and the glorious benefits of my inseparable oneness with Christ. Glory to his name forever. Begin to speak in other tongues. Declare that in the name of Jesus, you are a dispenser of this new way. You are an herald of this new way. Through you, men are coming to this new way. Through you, men locate the new way. Yes, these are the last days. Our man of God has taught us we're in the last days. And these are your preparation. And you're preparing men and women from all the nations of the world. And you are vitally involved in soul winning, yes. And through you, men and women are coming into the glorious light of Jesus. Begin to speak in other tongues. Man told Kaba Sotaya. Yes, through you in the name of Jesus. The gospel prevails in every nation of the world. In your community, in your family. Yes, men and women will get to know about Jesus. Through you, they will get to know about the new way. Through you, about the living way. Through you. Man Sota Kaba Shataragadis. Liron the sea Kaba Shataragadis. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Praise God. At this point, I would please like us to kindly rise up on our feet as we take our affirmation. Hallelujah. Now you say these words and you say them with the whole of your heart because Pastor says what you say is what you get. Say, I affirm that the Lord has perfected that which concerns me. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I am an offspring of the world. I am an offspring of the world. As Jesus is, so am I in this world. Let that sink. As Jesus is, so am I in this world. Aya, life is not a mystery unto me. Because the Holy Spirit teaches me all things. The truth of God are unveiled in my spirit. The truths of God are unveiled in my spirit. And by them, I dwell continually in the realms of righteousness. In the realms of righteousness. In the realms of peace. In the realms of joy. Hallelujah. My life is regulated by the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Therefore, no death, defeat, or failure in my path. Higher. Therefore, no death, defeat, or failure in my path. My life is upward and forward only. You didn't say that very well. My life is upward and forward only. Hallelujah. I can never be disadvantaged in life. I can never be disadvantaged in life. I am in Christ. I am seated with him. In the place of authority. Over and above. All principalities. All powers. And the rulers of darkness. In this world. I am an heir of God, the seed of Abraham, with complete access 
to an incorruptible inheritance. I am blessed beyond measure. I am blessed beyond measures. I am blessed beyond measures. And everything that is consistent with the good life, increase, progress, success, fruitfulness, productivity, add your own to it, advancement, <laughs> hey, miracles, hey, productivity, supernatural intervention, miracle money, everything you desire, but I have a satire. Hey, say productivity and a life of glory are my best right. I refuse to be moved by inflation, economic turndowns, and meltdowns because I live in a different plane of life. Blessed be God. Go ahead and speak in other tongues. Drive your swords in. Pastor said, don't stop saying it. Keep talking it. Don't stop saying it. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, you are above this world. Mantakabaya. As he is, so you are in this world. You are a success. You are going somewhere to happen. But someday they get all shattered. In everything you do, you prosper. In soul winning, you prosper. Partnership, prosper. Church growth, prosper. Business, prosper. Academics, riot of shatter. Yes, you prosper on all sides. You prosper in all things. Man talk about Sunday the Gedesia. She ran door sepa cateregedesa. Man de go see cater rock about setia. Shapa don't de go soteregedesia. Oh, paragatea basataya. In Jesus' name, say glory. Woo! Hallelujah. Once again, I want to say a big thank you to my man of God, Pastor Light, Moralfa. Pastor, thank you so much for this opportunity to take this segment. I'm so grateful, sir. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. I love you, sir. Let's make welcome the choir. Hallelujah. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? Name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change, Jesus? Come on, you say, Creator, Creator of the universe. What can't you do? Say, what can't you do? What can't you do? Jesus. 
God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Why don't you just welcome somebody to church with a kind smile? But of course, I can see someone that's not smiling. I think with a kind smile. Yeah, let's welcome the person again. Now, welcome the person at the other side with another kind smile, a kind smile. There are different kinds of smiles. There are some that are not very kind. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout, glory. glory. Praise the Lord. We're going to be listening to a message. Attitude. So I want you to bring out your writing materials and put down something and ensure that you gain something from this message. Thank you. Thank you what it talks about. And you are shining. And you are shining by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are shining by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are shining and nothing can stop you. It is your season. It is your time. Nothing can hinder you. This is your time. This is your hour. Favor is yours. Hallelujah. I want us to look at a few things in the Bible. There are certain things that define your personality, your fulfillment, and your value. Your attitude is very important. Somebody said years ago, attitude, the way to altitude. Good rhyme. Your attitude, your way of doing things, your way of saying what you want to say. You know, we can say something that is right with the something wrong or saying something wrong. They just have a bad attitude. They just have the wrong attitude. A lot of times we hear wrongly, not because what was said was wrong, but we had a wrong attitude in listening. Did you know that one of the reasons certain people have, they find themselves taking one step forward and then two steps backward. And then some other times, everything seems to be all right, but spiritually they're not fulfilled. It's a wrong attitude. The trouble is, a lot of people who have the wrong attitude hardly discover that they have a wrong attitude. So they blame everyone else around them for the things that go wrong about them. They think someone else is responsible. And no one is. Attitude can define your personality. It can define your fulfillment. Do you know there are people who are not fulfilled? They're not fulfilled at home. They're not fulfilled in their family. Always it looks like um, they're in the wrong house. You know, I shouldn't be in this house. This is not the right house. Some feel like they're in the wrong family. They feel they came through the wrong family. I should have never been born in this family. You know? 
They got the wrong attitude, but they don't realize it. They think everyone else is the problem. Same thing at work. You know why there's so much? I mean, the, oh boy. The multitude of people that, that are, they're still having exodus. The journey from one company to another, from, well, from one organization to another, they just can't be somewhere. Why? They got the wrong attitude and don't know it. So they think those there are their problem. They always see their wasted years, the wasted time. I wasted my years in Chevron. I wasted my years in Mobile. I wasted my years in the federal government. I wasted my years in the Ministry of Justice. I wasted my years in the Ministry of Education. They, they wasted their years everywhere. That's the way they think. But always they have felt it was someone else who didn't discover their greatness. <laughs> See? So they know they are valuable. But why can't anybody else find your value? Because chances are you got the wrong attitude. The wrong attitude. There's so much to learn from Jesus. Many times in your life when you, when you want to make progress, find out about the master's attitude and find out those whom Jesus praised. Did he praise anybody? Why did he praise the ones he praised? You can read some more. Study through the Old Testament as well and find out those whom God praised. Why did he praise them? What was peculiar to them? What was in their attitude or in their character that was so impressive to God? When I look at the New Testament section of the Bible, one of those characters that come to mind is John the Baptist because of what Jesus said about him. He said, of all men, there's no greater than John the Baptist. That's powerful. That's powerful. He said, John the Baptist. But then he said, the least in the kingdom of heaven. Hey, come on. Can we read it? All right. St. So Matthew's Gospel. Chapter 11. I'd like to begin reading from verse 7. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went he out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went he out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? He's asking them. You know, they had gone out to see John the Baptist when he was ministering. A lot of people went out to see him, to hear him. And, and Jesus now is asking them, when you went out to see John, what in the world did you think you were going to see? Who did you think he was? That's what he's asking them. Verse 9, but what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. 
Verily I say unto you, among them, among them that are born of women, there hath not reason a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, I want you to notice, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And, and, and that's important for us to understand. Notice he didn't say he that is least in the kingdom of God. He said he that is least in the kingdom of heaven, and there's a big difference. I remember sharing with you a long time ago. Uh, what was the title of that message? The kingdom, the power, and the glory, yeah. And then I explained to you the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is that which Jesus has come to establish in the earth. Jesus is the head of the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of heaven is actually here in the earth. The kingdom of God includes everything, but Papa God is the boss of that one. And he sent Jesus to establish the kingdom of heaven in the earth. And that is the kingdom of which we are a part. That kingdom started here when Jesus came. Are you listening to this? And took off after his death, burial, and resurrection. So it's actually the church of the New Testament. Okay? So that's functioning in the earth. So that means he's talking about those who are joint heirs with Christ. Are you listening to this? He's talking about us in the New Testament. The only reason he says that we are greater is because we have the body of Christ. And each one of us has been exalted to that place where we are seated together with Christ. So it's not just something about us as people, but us as the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. That's really powerful. Okay. Now, notice how Jesus commended John. So what kind of a man was John? How could Jesus commend such a man? If Jesus said the man was so great and no one born as a human was as great or greater than John the Baptist, I'd like to find out what does the Bible say more about him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Would you turn to St. John's Gospel, chapter 3, let's go down to, um, let me begin reading from verse 22. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea. And there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Anon near to Selim because there was much water there. And they, they came and were baptized. For John was not yet cast into prison. You get it? Now, John the Baptist was ministering. He was baptizing people. And Jesus also had come to baptize. 
So Jesus was baptizing somewhere, and John was baptizing somewhere. So now Jesus the Baptist and John the Baptist. <laughs> but the Bible does tell us that uh, actually Jesus left the, the baptism to his disciples to help out with when he was there. Okay? All right, now, verse 25. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. Now remember, um, baptism is one of those things in the Bible. Uh, let me put it this way. I don't know how many of you might have encountered people who, who uh, tried to split airs about water baptism. They say that... Um, Water baptism can be done in any way by aspersion. Uh, you can do it by pouring a bottle of water on somebody's head. You, you understand? Spring clean. All of these things. Or you can, just, you can just take a bath and you are baptized. You know? So, uh, they say, why do we say that to be baptized, you've got to be dipped into the water? So they got a problem with those who baptize by dipping into water. Now, here in Bible days, they have that problem. So notice what the question was. It says there arose a question between John's disciples and some of the Jews about the term used was purifying. Another term would be washings. I want you to get it right. Now, get, get to understand this background. Among the Jews, based on the law, they purified everything by washing. They didn't eat with those plates until they were washed. Not just washed like, you know, wash with soap and get it clean. No, it was ceremonial cleansing. It had to be washed religiously. In fact, they didn't mention the name of God until they had their baths. Are you listening to this? Now, when they wrote anything, if they got to the name of God, if they were writing a letter to somebody and they got to the name of God, the man stopped. Before he would write God's name, he would go and have his bath. <laughs> you understand? It was that serious. So, they had to purify everything by washing with water. And then they also had the sprinkling of blood. But that of sprinkling was done by the priest. But every Jew understood washing. They didn't go to the temple cards without washing. So now they find one man called John. He doesn't just wash them. Now, let me remind you about some of these washings. Some of these washings didn't mean, like I told you, uh, like washing the plate with water. No, they could sprinkle water on it. And that's, so it's ceremonial washing. So it signified that it had been cleansed of its uncleanness. So they sprinkled water on it or passed it through water. So many different ways they did. And just to be sure, this thing was ready for the Jew to use before God. So now, they find people are going to John, and John doesn't just sprinkle water on them. John doesn't just pour water on them. John dips them into the water. And they got the start. And they said, what kind of purifying is this? Must someone be dipped into the water? 
So that's why they called him John the Baptist. Now the word baptism, from where they got the Baptist, came from the Greek translation of the New Testament, the word baptizo. It means to dip completely into, to completely immerse. So they associated John's kind of purifying with the complete immersion of the persons. That's what distinguished between John's kind of purifying and the Jews' kind of purifying. They didn't dip people into the water. They sprinkled water on them. And here's this John dipping them completely inside. I said, hey, man, where are you from? <laughs> and so Jesus now comes on the scene, and he's not washing them like the Jews were doing or sprinkling water on them like the Jews were doing. He's acting like John the Baptist. He's dipping the people also into the water. You get in the background? Okay, let's read. We are, we're reading verse 25 again. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond the Jordan. You see, they were there when Jesus, when John said some things about Jesus after the baptism. He baptized Jesus. And that's another very powerful area. Okay, we'll talk about that. So they knew Jesus and John had met. They were there. And they heard the things that John said about Jesus. Now they find Jesus baptizing people too. So they come to John and, and they said unto him, A Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond the Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold the same baptizeth. He is dipping people into water too. And all men come to him. So many people are coming to him. They're still in your show. <laughs> and so John answered and said, who is that guy? Oh, come on here. Ain't that what you're reading? John answered and said, don't mind him. I'm bigger than him. Ain't that what you got? John said, we will see on the last day. <laughs> <laughs> Only true believers shall be right. <laughs> That's not what he said. Verse 27, John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Oh, glory to God. Yeah. What an answer. Listen, we're trying to find out about the man John, his attitude. What kind of a man was he? I want to remind you that he didn't know Jesus as good as you do. The man was spoken to by the Spirit of God like he would talk to any one of you. That's the way the Spirit of God spoke to him. And said, the one on whom you see the Spirit of God descend on him like a dove or in the form of a dove, the same is he that baptizes with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's all. And he knew by prophetic revelation who Jesus was. He didn't know him from anywhere else. It was prophetic revelation. So he could have been in competition with Jesus. He could have been upset to say, come on, man. You're not supposed to be baptized. I'm the Baptist. I've borne witness concerning you already. You just go die for them if that's it. <laughs> I'm the Baptist. Why didn't do that? He said, let's read his words again. Verse 27, John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly 
because of the bridegroom's voice. Oh, I like that. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. I like that. Attitude, 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 attitude. Your attitude can determine, can define your fulfillment in life. There are people who are never fulfilled. Not because things have gone wrong, but because they have a bad attitude. They have a bad attitude. He said, look, my joy is to hear the bridegroom's voice. He said, the one who owns the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom rejoices to hear his voice. He said, my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. I'm okay. I'm glad. Are you not the drama? The TV never shows your face. You just keep drumming and it's only the, it's only the soloist that they show. Aren't you the drama? Why can't anybody see your face? And yet you're the best drummer. So look, I helped make that music work. My joy is fulfilled. <laughs> what is your attitude? It matters what you're looking at in your life. The things that make us unhappy in life. The things that make us unhappy. The things that pain us. Sometimes we even develop the attitude of the man Haman in the Bible. Do you remember Haman in the Bible? Who had become so great, he was next to the king because the king promoted him. And every time he passed by, everybody stood up because um, Prince Haman was coming through. But there was a man who never bowed to Haman because he was a Jew. And that man knew the wickedness of Haman. His name was Mordecai. And when Haman noticed that the guy never bowed to him, he thought about what he was going to do until some friends came to him and said, have you noticed, have you noticed that that man, Mordecai, never bows when you pass by? He said, I thought so. Just wasn't sure whether or not it was because of me or something else. They said, it's you. Every time you pass by, he doesn't we, The rest of us will bow except Mordecai. What did Haman say? His pride was hurt. He couldn't take it. His pride was hurt. He couldn't take it. He said, look. To deal with Mordecai alone is a disgrace for me. I will finish up with all his people, his uncles, his cousins, everybody, all his friends, everyone that's associated with him. <laughs> and he went forth to do it. But God stopped him in his tracks. Why is it that sometimes some of God's children take up the attitude of Haman? There's someone who doesn't greet you. And that thing cannot leave your mind. Every time I come, he can't see me. He acts as if I'm so small. Until you are so upset one day, ah, am I so small you can't see me? <laughs> did you lose anything? No. Why did you care? If the guy doesn't greet you, he doesn't make you less than you are. You go ahead and greet him anyway. I don't mean try to be nasty and say, good morning, no. <laughs> no, don't get nasty. Just be nice. Be yourself. Don't care about those things. Have the right attitude. The right attitude. Ask yourself a question. If God didn't bless me like this, would I have been anybody to be seen? Why should I care? That's the way you should think. It pays when the Spirit of God corrects us about our attitude so that we can walk right. You still listening? 
So you come to a point in your life where you don't care about those things. They just don't matter. You develop the right attitude. When the wrong attitude shows up, nail it. Get it out of your life. And when you act correctly, you have the right attitude, God will continue to promote you. The Bible says God resists the proud. He elbows the proud. The more they try to rise by themselves, the more he elbows them. He resists them. They think it's someone else that's resisting them. No, 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 it's God. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. The humble just keeps moving forward. But the proud, you know, they can, I mean, I'm something, you know. They can't understand. You, I'm, who does it? Who? You know. But God looks at that humble fellow over there and exalts him. God's promotions cannot be forced by human beings. And when it's God who's promoting you, it doesn't come with bitterness. It doesn't come with anger. It doesn't come with jealousy. Are you listening? The right attitude. I know where I'm supposed to be by now. That is not from God. Who told you you're supposed to be somewhere? No, the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. What makes you better than someone else? I know, I know where my mates are talking. Really? Some are talking in prison. It's true. I know where my mates are. See, because I'm here. What? <laughs> God resists the proud. But it gives grace, grace, grace. I have seen people with abilities, unable to move. Why they are grumbling and getting angry where they are, but they, are, they have so much abilities. They know, others know that they have abilities. But as they move, God says, mm -mm. Why? Pride. The Bible says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. In due time. There is a due time. There's a due time. It might be in your office, and you've not been promoted for 10 years. You watch your juniors go ahead of you. Humble yourself. He will exalt you in due time. When that due time comes... Those 10 steps will not elude you. That he may exalt you in due time. We don't all journey through the same route. It doesn't mean first to start will be first to finish. One of the things you should be careful about in your life is the, the temptation to... Measure yourself with other people. Look at John. Look at John. Read him. Let's go again to that, to that portion we were reading. We'll read again verse 29. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. Ah! What an attitude. He must increase, but I must decrease. Jesus himself was humble. Did you read when he came to be baptized by John? The crowd came. Jesus was among them. When it got to Jesus' turn, the Holy Ghost descended on him. And John saw it by the Spirit and knew him because that was the sign given to him of God to recognize Jesus. Then John stopped and said, Master, I'm the one who has need to be baptized of you. Does thou come to me? And Jesus said, go ahead and baptize me. He said, for it behooves us to fulfill 
all righteousness. We have to fulfill all righteousness. He said, go ahead and baptize me. Ha! So John would lay hands on Jesus? No, no, no. You know, I know there are people who compete about laying around and says, look, this is my head. Only God has put his hand. <laughs> Someone's starting to lay hands on him. So, oh, he is. Eh? <laughs> See, is, it, is it you? <laughs> hmm. Hallelujah. Jesus said, go ahead. Let it be so. It's our responsibility to fulfill all righteousness. And was there and let John baptize him, dip him into the water, and bring him out. Jesus. Hallelujah. There are things in the Word of God that sometimes I think some of us miss. Would you turn to St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5? St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5. There's so much to gain in the Word of God. From verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them. Who's teaching? Jesus. He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Notice, he didn't say the kingdom of God. He said here, the kingdom of heaven. The poor in spirit? Who are the poor in spirit? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is about a lifestyle and authority. It's about a lifestyle and authority. That's what the kingdom of heaven is about. It's about a lifestyle and authority. Now Jesus says, that life belongs to them. That authority belongs to them. The poor in spirit. The poor in spirit. And then he says, the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven doesn't function in heaven, it functions in the earth. Now here are two things that can help you understand what is meant by the poor in spirit. One is that he said in spirit. And two, he said what belongs to them is the kingdom of heaven, which functions in the earth. The kingdom of heaven functions in the earth among human beings, physical beings, the spiritual beings, but they live in physical bodies. And yet these ones are poor in spirit. How then could the kingdom of heaven belong to them? Watch this. The kingdom of heaven has come to us by Jesus Christ. We have become joint heirs with him. So in the realm of the spirit, we are absolutely wealthy. We got well untold. We are absolutely wealthy. But then, we function in the earth. And in the earth, He's given us authority, meaning there's nothing that we can't get by the use of that authority. So how can you then be poor in spirit? Because in the realm of the spirit, you're rich. Then in the earth, you've got authority. You can get what you want. So how can you be poor in spirit? Very good. Look at Jesus the Bible tells us he didn't seize upon his reputation as the Son of God. 
but laid down his glory. It tells us something about how we can, let me give you a simple example. Jesus, a, 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 young, a rich young ruler came to him one time. You remember the story? A rich, that's the way the Bible describes him, a rich young ruler. That means a young prince, but he was rich. So the young man came to Jesus and said, good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, um, you know the commandments. Keep them and you shall live. He said, which one? Because he had done something. He had lived right. So he said, which one? And Jesus went, thou shalt and thou shalt and thou shalt. And when Jesus was through, the man said, all these have I kept from my youth. What else do I lack? Then Jesus said, all right, go and sell what you have and give it to the poor and come and follow me. Aha. Oh. The Bible says the man was sad and went away. What was that? What was Jesus saying? Was Jesus against what the man had? No. If that were it, he would have said it the first time. That wasn't a problem. Jesus wanted the man to have the kind of attitude that was, I, I want you. Nothing else can satisfy. Jesus said, go sell what you have, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. No, 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 he didn't. He went away. He went away. He missed that chance. What? When Jesus is blessed are the poor in spirit. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. That means those who have in spirit given up everything. You may see a lot with them, but they have counted all those things but dung. That's what Paul said. You've come to a point in your life where nothing matters. And everything you have is for the purpose of the kingdom of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Nothing satisfies. Nothing is important to you. In spirit, you have given up those things. You know you can be wearing a watch, an expensive watch, but you have given it up. In other words, you've come to a point in your life if the Spirit of God says, hey, can you give this to so-and-so or can you give that in the offering? Phew, no arguments. You get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You've come to a point in your life where nothing really matters to you. That's the poor in spirit. They have spiritually in themselves given up everything. So it doesn't matter what you see with them. Those things don't own them anymore. Blessed are the poor in spirits. To them belongs the kingdom of heaven. Christ's kingdom that has been established here in the earth to bring the lifestyle of heaven and the authority of heaven into this world to bless men's lives. Hallelujah. Are you still there? What's the second one? After you said that, what's the next verse? Blessed, verse 4, blessed are they that Praise the Lord. Attitude. Glory to God. Did you gain something from this message? By the way, the message is available at the ministry material stand. So you can always get it on your way out. Glory to God. He said, have the right attitude. He said, attitude is the way you do things. The way you say what you want to say. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. May God resist the proud. 
or to give grace to the humble. Glory to God. I want to thank Pastor for the opportunity to handle this segment. Thank you very much, Pastor. Pastor is currently on an important assignment, and that's why he's not here. But he sends his love to us all. Glory to God. What do you say to Pastor? We love you, Pastor. Thank you very much. Right now, I'm going to be giving our offering. I want you to bring out your offering, your tithe, your seed. I'm going to send it forth. I want you to pray over it before you give it. And while we're doing that, I'm going to read out the following announcements. If you need an envelope, you can signify to the ushers. They would give you one. Your Love World Special Season 3, Phase 3, with our prophet, Reverend Chris Oyakilove, will be holding from Monday 12th of April to Friday 16th of April. Let's make plan ahead to participate in this. Glory to God. The next live healing stream service now has a date. It will be coming up on Monday 7th of June to Wednesday 9th of June. In accordance with the instruction of our highly esteemed Zonal Pastor, we'll be having here in church tomorrow morning, which is Thursday, the 1st of April. We're going to be praying from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., just one hour. I want you to tell the person beside you, say we'll be praying here tomorrow morning, from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Glory to God. It is very compulsory for everybody so please kindly ensure that you are on ground as we pray together. It's important that we come together to pray, especially the first day of the month. Sunday is Easter. And it's also the day of our global communion service with our man of God. It means we're going to be fasting on that day. <laughs> Glory to God. There's a special training session for all the foundation school teachers, as well as the first timers ministry ministers across the group, and all pastors and coordinators on Easter Monday, April 5th by 10 a.m. here at the group church, Samonda. So by 10 a.m. on Monday, April 5th, I'm going to be meeting here in church. Our mega cell outreaches is still in progress. Any plan for yours if you are not, if you have not done that yet? Our cell meeting this week is prayer and planning. Foundation school classes are in progress. They hold immediately after service on Sundays and by 5 p.m. on Tuesdays. It's compulsory for everyone and for everyone to be able to function, that wants to function in any capacity in church to go through foundation school. Let's take this very seriously and enroll today. Praise the Lord. The May celebrants have been asked to submit their favorite pictures at the PCD stand immediately after this service. We're going to be celebrating our soul winners in church on Sunday next week. So kindly reach out and bring your soul to church on Sunday as we'll be celebrating you specially. We announce that anyone who can speak any of the following dialects fluently should see Sister Ayobami Akin Desmond or Sister Fumi Oladeji immediately after the service. This these dialects are Ijesha, Ijebu, Ekiti, Ondo, Egba, and Ego. If you can speak any of this um, dialect very fluently, you just wait behind after the service. Let's be reminded of our service on Wednesday, 6 p.m. Sunday, Yoruba service starts 
and our English service starts 9 a.m. Glory to God. Do you have anyone worship with us for the first time today, tonight? Is there anyone worship with us for the first time? Okay, why don't you just stand on your feet? Let's close. Or just take out time to just talk to God on your own. It's just you and God here at this moment. I want to just focus on him right now and just speak to him. Just thank him. Thank you for what you've benefited from service tonight. You know, the message talked about attitude. What is your attitude? It's time to thank God right now. It's time to pray. What is your attitude? Even concerning prayer. What is your attitude concerning the things of God? What's your attitude concerning life? How do you see life? You say it matters the way you see life. It matters the things that you see in life. Let's just thank God. Thank God for that which you've heard tonight. You are living here a better person than that one that came in here tonight. Let's just thank God right now. Lord, we thank you for our seed. We thank you for our offering. We thank you for our tithes. We thank you for our giving obedience to your word. We thank you for the blessings of increase that has come to us right now. We thank you for the miracle of today's service. We thank you for increase that has come. We thank you for expansion that has come. We thank you for a better attitude that we have living in this place. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. Even in our relationship with our fellow brethren, we display the right attitude, O oh Lord, in our relationship concerning you, O oh Lord. We display the right attitude. O oh, Kamali Kumpra Askadodon to preach. Oh, glory to God. In Jesus' name of friend. Amen. Glory to God. Let's not forget 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. So you prepare whatever you need to prepare tonight so that you can be here in time. It's just going to be one hour. At exactly 8 a.m., I'm going to be closing. Glory to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, as we fellowship with the Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with us now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Cherub brethren.